Hey there, and welcome to the video. My name is Erin McHale. I am the founder and CEO of FemaleFightFans.com, which is a website that brings together fans of women's MMA, as well as women who love combat sports. If you haven't checked out the site, make sure to go to FemaleFightFans.com, check out our merch, articles, podcast the works also if you like video content like this make sure to give us a thumbs up and also subscribe down below uh to see more well, let's get into the preview of ufc 228 which is coming up on september 8th this fight card has kind of a lot of weird drama behind it as the main and co-main events have really a lot of backstory going into them um, as well as a lot of kind of weird circumstances in which people think the fights are either predetermined or maybe shouldn't be happening at all. So let's start off with uh, Winley versus Till which is um, the headlining fight on this card for the welterweight belt. Um, so Tyron Woodley originally was slated to fight Colby Covington since Colby Covington won the interim title at welterweight against Rafael Dos Anjos um, earlier this year. And as things go, the interim champion always fights uh, the actual <laughs> champion to unify the belt. Covington had, well, supposedly had some kind of injury, although there was some question as to whether that was legit and needed to wait a little bit um, in order to book the fight for his health. Um, but the UFC decided essentially that they didn't need Covington and what they did need was a title fight for this card. So instead they decided to book Darren Till um, as the challenger against Woodley instead of Covington. People have really strong and negative opinions about Colby Covington. I personally find him very entertaining and I think he's kind of a genius. We're sort of playing right into his hand by talking about him because the whole reason that he does everything that he does is so that people will talk about it and that he will become relevant and have a name for himself um, in MMA and it's work on him the interim uh, title spot in the first place. There's uh, the fact that Darren Till missed weight in his last fight which was against Stephen Wonderboy Thompson. He missed weight for the fight and traditionally if you miss weight um, you're not even if you're sort of in the number one contender spot or in the conversation for a title shot you won't uh, receive that coming off of missing weight for obvious reasons right because you have to make championship weight in order to actually fight for a title it makes sense in terms of having that sanction both for the individual to make sure they can actually make weight as well as for the organization because if the said fighter misses weight then they have a whole mess on their hands in terms of um, the belt since you're not eligible to fight for the title if you don't actually make uh, the championship weight which in this case would be 170 pounds. People are saying it's sort of rewarding bad behavior and why should people even make weight if the punishment which is typically a 20 to 30 percent purse fine is, is really minute in the grand scheme of things which I think is a very relevant question. To see the Tyron and Covington fight. Everybody wants to see that fight. They have such a beef um, and I think it would be interesting stylistically too. And in the era where they don't have a lot of big stars and they need money fights and they need um, storylines and all of this kind of stuff that they're kind of lacking, they have this right in front of them and then they miss the boat because they want to have a title fight at welterweight on this card seems a little bit short-sighted. Now let's circle back for a second to the co-main event which is Nico Montano taking on Valentina Shevchenko for the first ever title defense of the women's flyweight belt. Um, also some drama here. Um, Montano uh, won the belt but a lot of people thought that Shevchenko was really the real champion at 125 pounds. She moved down, she fought someone else. It was one of the most one-sided fights I've ever seen and that it was pretty clear that she was going to be the number one contender and have the next shot at the belt. The belt was actually won back in December um, and a lot of people were like, well, where's Nico? You know, because she wasn't signing a contract, she wasn't doing anything to move the fight forward with Valentina. 
according to her, she was sick. Um, she kept having chronic ear infections and um, some viral throat infections and then ended up actually having a tonsillectomy um, because she wasn't really getting better and was having these back-to-back -back issues. So she had a tonsillectomy and um, I actually had a tonsillectomy. So um, it's a pretty serious surgery and it has like a two or three week recovery time. So then she had to recover. Obviously she couldn't train for a fight. Although Valentina has accused her of um, just kind of being gun shy, being scared, avoiding the fight, avoiding her. And a lot of people um, think that of drama. Um, so going back now to looking more closely at the matchup of Woodley versus Till, um, it's basically a matchup of a dynamic power striker in Till um, versus a very well-rounded power striker and wrestler. Kern also has a lot of power and he, he doesn't really have a lot of weaknesses. He's definitely very well-rounded everywhere. However, Darren Till has a very similar style to Stephen Wonderboy Thompson and we all saw the first two fights of Woodley versus Thompson so I think there's a question of could the fights go similarly? Is tiring in a fight in this way of just kind of staying on the outside and being elusive and just not really going forward or is he going to change his approach here? Tyron's also been out for over a year. He hasn't fought since UFC 214 back in July of 2017. And I think really the key to this fight is going to be the wrestling. Tyron really hasn't used a whole lot of wrestling in his last few fights against uh, Damian Maya. He did use sort of an anti-wrestling style to keep things off of the ground, um, which made sense with that particular matchup. But I think um, with Darren Till having very little ground skills, I think that the wrestling is really going to be the key and and Tyron um, either forcing the wrestling, forcing him into the clinches and really just trying to take the fight to the ground um, versus Darren um, being able to prevent the takedown. I feel like that whole narrative is going to kind of dictate who wins this fight because I think in terms of power and technique in the striking department, they're pretty evenly matched. Now looking at Montano and Chevchenko, um, this is kind of a newcomer versus vet matchup as I see it because Montano has only been training MMA for five or six years and Chevchenko has been training since he was five years old and is very well accomplished in Muay Thai um, but really has skills everywhere and is a true, also a very true well-rounded MMA fighter. Montano overall is sort of similar to Darren Till in that she's more of a striker. She maybe doesn't have... She does have knockouts, but maybe not like crazy power, but she doesn't have any wins by submission and definitely is more, um, I think she's comfortable everywhere, but she's definitely more um, of a stand-up fighter and someone that succeeds in the striking department. Shevchenko is also more of a striker, having a Muay Thai background, and that's just kind of her bread and butter, but she showed against Juliana Pena that, who is a, a submission specialist that you know she has a legit ground game who's more dynamic who's faster who has the better footwork that's going to be the real key here in terms of who wins i don't necessarily think it's a given that shevchenko is going to win um i think montano will surprise people and just like she did on the ultimate fighter she was the 14th seed out of 15 and then won the whole show so i think the elusiveness and the speed is really going to dictate who wins this fight and finally, briefly looking at uh, the third fight on the card, which is and Jessica Andrade taking on Karolina Kowalkiewicz, a very anticipated strawweight matchup. Um, I'm so excited for this fight. It's kind of been a long time coming. They've been booked for it before. Andrade was thought to maybe have a, the next shot at the, the title at uh, 115 pounds, but Rose is out for the rest of the year and is dealing with some injuries. Um, so she agreed to this fight against Kovalkiewicz. They both fought for the title before, but uh, Carolina fought at UFC 205 against uh, Ioana um, in a pretty close fight. Um, and, and then after that went on to lose to Claudia Cadelia, and then um, she bounced back with wins over Jody Esquivel and Felice Herrig. However, uh, Esquivel and Herrig are not really super highly ranked opponents. Uh, Esquivel is not even in the top 15, and Herrig I think is around 8 or 9, so um, not the same level of opponents on Draja's face, because she also fought Claudia Cadelia and, and beat her. Um, and also fought Tisha Torres, who are both top five opponents. I think there's definitely something to be said there, because um, KK hasn't really dealt with an opponent this strong in a long time. I think the key to this fight is going to be pressure. You know, Andrade is a tank. She goes forward. 
she throws people up in the air. You know, what she does is, is unprecedented. And KK is going to need to cut off the cage, use her movement and her distance um, against Andrade to win this fight. Because she definitely, uh, Joanna exposed Andrade in their title fight um, by just being elusive and keeping her distance and cutting off the cage every time she'd get close to her. So KK can definitely win probably with that same kind of approach, but she's going to need to just not let her emotions get the best of her too with the bad blood that they have um and just really stay as far away from her as possible and use her footwork to kind of make her chase her around that's my preview of the card um i'd love to hear what your fight picks are i didn't give my actual picks because i just wanted to do more of a breakdown but i would love to hear yours and remember to please rate um the video give it a thumbs up subscribe check out our website and uh thank you all so much for watching